Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. And thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak with you uh, as the both country, Cambodia and United States, are commemorating the 70th anniversary. It's very remarkable even for this year. Despite pandemic, I see a lot of uh, activity still going as usual, and uh, we have been enjoying this activity too. But here today, I would like to learn more about because this, this month's theme is humanitarian assistance, mm -hmm. uh, how U.S. have been helping Cambodia develop and improve the country, especially raise the, uh, the well-being of Cambodian people throughout the, the, the past decade. I uh, would like to learn more how important this humanitarian, mm. uh, humanitarian assistance is. Sorry. So uh, let me begin my question. Please. Okay. Thank you. And it's nice to be with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I think based on uh, the U.S. Uh, embassy report and also uh, State Department reports, it has been more than uh, $1.6 billion in human and dirt assistance the United States have pro uh, provided to Cambodia to support the livelihood and uh, normally uh, to help the country improve governance, uh, people, well-being, as well as health, and many other areas. Uh, can you uh, tell how have this humanitarian assistance been effective so far in helping cause save the Cambodian future and also uh, make sure that Cambodian people's well-being will be uh, prosper? Mm. Well, thank you very much. Indeed, we are highlighting humanitarian assistance this month during a, a great year of celebration. A friendship and ties between the American and the Cambodian people. You know, in fact, humanitarian assistance goes back to the 1950s. And you can look at, I think, three distinct separate periods of assistance. In those early years, helping Cambodia with its newfound independence, assistance to contribute to infrastructure, roads, and schools. Then, of course, Cambodia had a conflict period and as a humanitarian gesture, the United States provided safe haven and refuge for many Cambodians who were fleeing the country, looking for somewhere to go to keep safe and secure. Then, starting in the early 1990s, a great deal of humanitarian assistance to help Cambodia recover from conflict and develop. I think the true measure of success is a question for the Cambodian people. But from my perspective, we see the results. We have contributed to Cambodia's priorities, and now Cambodia is substantially more prosperous, more stable, uh, more peaceful. And you can see where our assistance, working in partnership, has produced very good results for the Cambodian people. If I ask one thing that you want to highlight, so what would be one remarkable thing you as the representative of the U.S. government being very much proud of in terms of supporting Cambodia and humanitarian assistance? Well, I could give you a few examples. And in addition to humanitarian assistance, we, of course, provide development assistance. And you can see the Cambodian people becoming more healthy, yeah. uh, eating more nutritiously, living longer, and having good livelihoods. But let me give you a couple of examples of really strong humanitarian assistance. In particular, in helping Cambodia meet its objectives to be mine-free by 2025. So demining we have been contributing to for, for decades. And it wasn't that long ago here in Cambodia where there were thousands, sadly, thousands of victims each year who encountered mines that had been set in Cambodia by many different actors, foreign actors and domestic actors. But as a humanitarian gesture, the United States has been contributing. Now, those numbers are down to the hundreds each year. We hope to get those numbers down to zero, just like Cambodia hopes to be mine-free over the next five years. This is truly an important success, keeping Cambodian people safe, healthy, and secure, but also ensuring that land is available for productive means, agriculture and tourism. And this has been a great result so far, but we have more progress to achieve. Okay. Let me move to healthy 
being healthy. Uh, right now, I believe uh, many other countries around the world, I think everyone's being affected by coronavirus, the novel coronavirus pandemic. I believe that the United States also have been doing a lot to support Cambodia, uh, develop its health care system. So uh, taking this into consideration, is there any future plan or something that have been doing so far to support Cambodia healthcare system or new initiative that you're planning to do more to support because despite the fact that it has been improved, there's still a lot to do more in terms of developing it. Is there any initiative you want to inform us? Maybe it's a future planning or something. I think you're absolutely right. This pandemic is a global pandemic and is causing unprecedented impact on the world both on health and economic well-being. I like to say that we are all in this together and have to work and help each other. If there's any good news in Cambodia, yeah. it's that our health assistance has been long-standing over many decades, helping to build a public health infrastructure here. And I'm very proud of our U.S. government health agencies, medical agencies that have already been working here, particularly on infectious diseases. So we have our uh, Centers for uh, Disease Control, uh, CDC. We also have other agencies that are working here, like the National Institutes for Health, the US Navy, the US Agency for International Development, USAID, and the State Department, all helping to fight infectious disease through really strong surveillance programs. And Cambodia's made a lot of progress. When you look at diseases like malaria and HIV, this is a model country in reducing and keeping, uh, reducing infections and keeping the public safe and healthy. This was enormously helpful when the pandemic arrived here in Cambodia. And we've been working hand in hand with public health authorities here on efforts including surveillance, contact tracing, and even testing. And this has made a big difference. Thus far, Cambodia has been doing fairly well in keeping the pandemic from broad impact on public health here. There have been less than 300 cases and a very low incidence of communal transmission. Yeah. That's really important. Nonetheless, we're not out of the woods yet. We have to work very hard to keep everyone safe, but we also have to work to protect the economy, which is suffering a fairly significant blow here, just like yeah. in the United States. So thus far, we have contributed $11 million specifically to the response to, to COVID yep. with our existing health programs and also to begin the economic recovery. Going forward, these efforts will continue to be very important, surveillance, contact tracing, testing, but also the United States is contributing enormous quantity of money to trying to develop a vaccine. Yep. I'm confident that will succeed. <laughs> But when we find a vaccine, there will be global challenges with distribution and ensuring all of us can get vaccinated. I anticipate that we will be working very hard at that stage here in Cambodia as we are elsewhere in the world and in the United States to ensure proper distribution and vaccination programs. I'm also confident when you look at the success we've had in the past on other infectious diseases, smallpox, Japanese encephalitis, you know, pick your disease, yes. we can do this. And I know working hand in hand here in Cambodia, we'll make progress on that as well. You raised a uh, vaccination that everyone start to talk right now. We've been discussing distribution is going to be very challenging for almost everyone, not only those countries who found it, but those who will be receiving it after that. Uh, I think uh, my very important question is, it's going to be, is Cambodia is going to be to be prioritized for that kind of global good for the United States in particular? I mean, if the United States is going to, is, is going to uh, successfully develop the vaccine, is Cambodia going to be prioritized? You know, I'm not an expert on vaccinations and development and distribution. I will leave it to the experts, except to say that our message about being in this together holds true now and in the future. The platform we have here for strong public health partnerships is really tremendous. And it's been very exciting for me to see our professionals working 
side by side with their Cambodian counterparts. And as I say, it's had a very positive impact in Cambodia. This country's population is substantially more healthy these days. And it's not just the public health partnerships. We have programs here for food security and maternal child health and nutrition, and even in agriculture. Uh, this is a big uh, agriculture country. Many people get their livelihoods from agriculture. So increasing yields and efficiencies, access to markets, the introduction of technology, education in agriculture. This is helping the population stay healthy and get even healthier. As a result, people are living longer, people are stronger, and that's a very good thing for the Cambodian population. Uh, if we look into the future, the uh, United States have been investing a lot in Cambodia's future. We cannot deny it. And I just want to know, in terms of uh, preparing Cambodia's future, mm. for example, like we talk about being healthy, we talk about uh, education, we talk about developing healthcare system, agriculture, which is one of the most important uh, uh, sector in Cambodia economy. Mm. But what about some sort of green future? We involve renewable energy, dealing with climate change is the most uh, threatening or uh, the most uh, important issue that the world is, have been focusing. So have been uh, the humanitarian assistant focus on that type of issue? I think that's a very good point, looking to the future. And you cite the environment. Uh, we all have to give adequate, important attention to the environment. Here in Cambodia, we have some existing programs. And what I like to describe as the good news is that Cambodia has more protected territory, protected natural resources than many countries in the world. The challenge is to keep it protected uh, and to work hand in hand with communities who need to develop with a population that, that's growing. So our, our programs are looking at protecting natural resources and countering some of the big challenges like land grabbing, yeah. illegal lobbying, uh, logging, yeah. the trafficking of endangered species, both wildlife and flora. Yeah. And Cambodia has to protect these just like we all need to. Going into the future, we need to give that attention. When you talk about the impact of climate change, we can see that here in Cambodia and elsewhere. We have a strong partnership with Cambodia and the other lower Mekong countries to protect water resources, but other aspects mm -hmm. where countries, all five countries in the lower Mekong region, derive important livelihoods and benefits from the Mekong and other natural resources. Here in Cambodia, the Mekong River is critically important. So is the Tonle Sap, yeah. which relies on the Mekong. And we need to work together uh, to ensure the sustainable use of these water resources. But there are other areas related to this going into the future where I'd like to continue to give attention. First is youth. Cambodia is a very young country. Over 70% of Cambodians are under the age of 30. That's an enormous uh, resource and an important factor going forward. Youth need to be educated. So we're investing in education. Youth need access to technology. We're investing in those areas. Why? Because these are the priorities of the Cambodian people. Also, I don't want to overlook another humanitarian assistance area where we focus, helping Cambodia prepare and react to natural disasters. Natural disasters are a reality. Indeed, they're increasing. When you look at cyclones and tornadoes and fires and drought and what have you, we all have to be prepared. So we have a program through our USAID uh, efforts here to, to look at disasters, look at the indicators, know when they're coming, where they're most impacted, and how we can all quickly respond. Also, other areas too, law enforcement cooperation because we're tackling crime and international crime. Um, but all of these areas are important to the Cambodian people. Let me just end on that note, people. Strong people-to-people -people ties. We continue to invest in this because that's the foundation for our relationship. And that's where the greatest uh, bang for the buck lies, if you will, because when people get to know each other through business, through tourism, through education, we have greater understanding and we can enhance and strengthen our cooperation. So it's critically important. You might know in the United States, there are over 300,000 people who identify as being Cambodian American. That's a great resource for us. Yeah 
because they have ties to their communities. They can contribute to the relationship through business, tourism, uh, and, uh, and, and other aspects that, that bind people together. So we're very proud of their contributions in the United States, but also to the relationship. That is very important to talk about people to people tie uh, under the theme of humanitarian assistance. Uh, have you been very much satisfied with the current situation, I mean, of the, the current state people to people connectivity between the two countries? Or you believe that there are a lot of things to do more to develop that connectivity? Well, I'm, I'm very pleased with the foundation and the success of many of our programs here, including the Peace Corps that brings volunteers here to work in education. We have Fulbright scholars who come here and Cambodian scholars who go to the United States and other programs like that, leadership programs to identify young and upcoming Cambodians who can contribute to the country. Uh, these, are, these are terrific. I'd like to do more. We have about 600 Cambodians who study in the United States. Why not 6,000? And so I'd like to provide uh, more information on those kind of opportunities because they get, young Cambodians get good skills in the United States and bring them back to Cambodia and build stronger people-to-people -people ties. So we can do more. There are other areas I think we can do more and we, we always like to say there's room for improvement in the relationship and how we work together. We have substantial programs helping Cambodia's democracy and governance and rule of law. We have some concerns in those areas too. There are Cambodians who have concerns. We'd like to continue to contribute to see those areas achieve the same kind of progress because a strongly democratic Cambodia that respects uh, international human rights standards is a stronger community member of the, of the global community. Yeah. And it's uh, a sure ticket to greater prosperity. Yeah. And so those areas, we, we have many partners here that we work with, and I think we'll continue to do so. That, mm. that, that is important. Uh, you mentioned uh, a lot about how important it is to have Cambodia. But I, I, I would like to learn more how U.S. have been benefiting from uh, this. Of course, Cambodia already benefit, have benefited from U.S. support, but the United States, on the other hand, what has it been benefiting from uh, humanitarian assistance to Cambodia in terms of bilateral relation and beyond? I think it's a great question and I'm always keen to answer very honestly and frankly all of these programs that help Cambodia develop and become more prosperous, more peaceful, more stable, more democratic the United States benefits. A more prosperous Cambodia will include a population that wants to buy more American products and the American brand here is well known and well respected, uh, we can increase our trade. Right now, the United States buys a lot from Cambodia. We'd like to see also Cambodians buying more from the United States and my economy and American workers would, would benefit. As Cambodia becomes more healthy yeah. and combats infectious disease, that's awfully important because disease doesn't respect boundaries and borders. Yeah. And a healthy Cambodia means uh, a more healthy world. And as Cambodia becomes more integrated with the region, that's good for the United States because Cambodia can be a voice to address regional challenges like crime, like trafficking, like proliferation. So it's very good for the United States. All of that is in the macro sense. Let me also give you an example in the micro sense. Cambodia has been very helpful for an important humanitarian goal of the United States, and that is to account for missing Americans from the conflict period. And Cambodia has been a model of cooperation. And as a result, we've accounted for many Americans that are missing, returned their remains to the United States. That's so important, especially for American families. We still have over 40 Americans who are missing from that period, the 1960s and 1970s. We continue to get really important cooperation from Cambodia, Cambodian authorities, local communities to identify where they might be missing, undertake archeological digs, and try and tell the entire story. And that's so critically important for, for Americans and American families. We never forget Americans who served abroad um, for our country, and we're very pleased. So 
This is an example of where humanitarian assistance also helps the United States, and we're very grateful. One other area, Cambodia was a beneficiary for many years, and still is, of the United Nations assistance here. Now Cambodia has been in a position to give back and contributes peacekeepers to peacekeeping operations, especially in far-flung areas in Africa. These are challenging places to serve, but Cambodia is helping to keep peace in those areas. That's a way of giving back to the world. And the United States, like other countries, benefits. We want to encourage that and continue to help. We have been focusing on the success and the importance of the humanitarian assistance itself. But is there any challenges uh, that the United, the United States uh, also have faced in, when it comes to providing humanitarian assistance to Cambodia? Well, we always look in providing our assistance for broad cooperation, support from authorities, access to areas and communities. And I think all of those things have been trending in the right direction. They can become better when we have greater understanding and greater cooperation between our countries. You've cited our 70th anniversary, and already we've hi highlighted terrific cooperation in agriculture, women and gender issues, youth, technology, education, public health, people-to-people -people ties, this month humanitarian assistance, and more to come. We are going to focus on trade and investment. We're going to uh, focus on our cooperation in ASEAN and the region. At the end of the year, we'll also focus on our cooperation with democracy and human rights. We'd love to see improvements there because stronger progress in accordance with Cambodia's constitution means greater prosperity, greater strength and cooperation between the two of us. And all of those other areas will in turn be strengthened. So we can do more together, but I'm very encouraged by so many positive trends. I'm especially encouraged by the Cambodian people. They're resilient, they're creative, they're innovative, they're young, they have all the right ingredients to bring Cambodia to the next level. Not just lower middle income status, but middle income and even higher income. All the ingredients are here. And I'm encouraged, I'm optimistic, and I'm delighted to be here representing my country in all the efforts to try and improve the relationship between the two of us. 70 years, it has been so long, and we still keep counting. I believe that's going to be a very positive and very uh, tremendous success in the future. But to you, as ambassador, and you've been here, I think, literally one year, since you assumed your role, mm -hmm. how do you see the future of the relation between the two countries, mm -hmm. taking into account so many different uh, low people to people time might not be a very much challenging for United States, but in terms of political level, in terms of uh, a higher level that require a lot of work to do. Well, it is great to celebrate a milestone, 70 years since we established official diplomatic relations. And you know, in 1950, Cambodia wasn't even yet independent. That was three years before independence. We're proud of our support for that process. And we've achieved a lot together. There have been some complications over the years. Cambodia went through a very challenging period, but has recovered and has, as I say, all of the ingredients for future progress and success. So I'm looking forward to the next 70 years where we can achieve greater things. And I'm optimistic because if we work together, if we dialogue together, we can do great things. I am now helping Cambodia prepare because this is important for the United States as well, to be the chair of ASEAN in two years, in 2022. That's an important role. It's even more important than in the past because during that year, Cambodia will host incredibly important meters, meetings and many regional global leaders will come here. The ASEAN Regional Forum, the East Asia Summit and many other mechanisms that include the United States. But the big powers, the small countries, everyone gathers here to tackle regional cooperation and address regional and global challenges. The chair role yep. is very important to be a good host, to set the tone, to create a platform for this cooperation and efforts to find common ground. So I'm starting early. I know some Cambodians are starting early to think about that because it's coming up soon. Yeah, two years. Yeah. 
The current chair of Vietnam will hand over to Brunei in just a few months. Then after Brunei comes Cambodia. So important. And I look forward to American leadership coming here in 2022. Um, and we hope that Cambodia can be a strong, good host. There are a lot of regional challenges to address. Conflict in the South China Sea, uh, the threats posed by North Korea, international crime, humanitarian challenges in a number of countries, including in Myanmar, that has international implications. We all have to work together. Those are the tough issues. There are other e issues within GRASP that we certainly can uh, strengthen and make great progress on. So I look to the future. I'm optimistic. I hope Cambodians are optimistic because we can see that Cambodians like and appreciate the relationship with the United States. And, and certainly we will all benefit from a stronger relationship. I'm hopeful we can get there. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for your time. For this opportunity. Thank you.